Hey everyone, welcome to Homestead Mentors. We are getting ready to start our meetup with Zach Buckle at Farm Table West. And Zach is going to be going over how to start seeds this year and really mastering how to start seeds that are difficult and how to use a special tool that he utilizes every year for his farm um, and his garden. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight Zach here. So he's up at the top of your screen. Zach, can you go ahead and say hello? Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Okay. And then, Zach, you need um, the gardening tool up right away, correct? Yes, that would be great. Okay. I'd like to start with that. Yeah. And if you would, Zach, just go ahead and introduce yourself to those who are going to watch this recording later or who are on the webinar today. Just kind of explain who you are, and then we'll go ahead and jump right in. All right. Yeah. So. I'm Zach Buckle. Uh, I own and operate Farm Table West, which is a about a half acre vegetable farm in northern Wyoming. And we grow vegetables fresh to harvest all year round. So we are actually harvesting fresh vegetables right now, even though we do get temperatures down to negative 30. And um, so that's my background. And I'm really excited to share um uh, some of my knowledge on growing food with you. And so today we're going to go over uh, seed starting because we're entering one of my favorite times of year. Actually, it is my favorite time of year, which is spring. Um, we're only like two weeks away from official spring, but to me, it already feels like spring. Um, I can just feel it. The, the birds are much louder right now and the sun's a lot higher and I just kind of can tell it's time. So. Uh, I've been planting seeds for about a month now um, for the farm, and that's a lot of that's going to go into really specialized greenhouses, but it's the exact same thing you're going to be doing with your gardens. And so um, a lot of what I've been doing lately is actually crop planning and um, figuring out my planting dates for the farm. And um, this tool that uh, we've got here for you, the spring planting schedule tool, is the best garden version of what I have for the farm that I've ever seen. Um, it, I found it a couple of years ago from a guy on YouTube that is a really hardcore gardener in Chicago, and he did a spectacular job coming up with this. Um, so this tool is just a simple Excel document that you can uh, pull up on your computer. And all you have to do is um you go into the top um right corner of that green bar where it says last uh frost date and for whenever you, you need to go and google your last frost date for your area that's here in wyoming because we have uh last frost date of may 21st on average um, and so all you have to do is Google what that no date is for your area. And this tool will tell you the right time to plant every single one of these crops, which is basically the majority of what you're going to want to grow in your garden. Sure, there's a few um, crops that are missing there, but this is really handy. I even sometimes still look at this um, when I can't remember the right time to plant something because I still forget. Because some things I only plant once a year, like things like celery, onions, parsley, which we're going to talk about today. Um, and it's hard to remember exactly what time of year to plant. And that's why I have a special Excel document for my farm that I keep track of dates I planted in the past. Um, because that tells me exactly the best time to plant and when I actually was able to harvest it. Um, you don't have to be that precise with gardening, but it is really helpful to keep track of those dates when you actually do plant things. Um, but this is a great starting point. So um, to explain a little bit about this uh, sheet, you'll see that there's um, on the left, you got a list of all the crops. So you got your um, bok choy, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, all that stuff. You'll see that on the top, you've got a list of dates, which are um, weeks. So that's like uh, probably Sunday of whatever week in the month um, you're looking at. And then there's 
yellow highlights. Uh, the yellow highlights uh, identify the time where you're supposed to start that crop in your nursery or in your house. So if you're just starting plants on your windowsill, that time window, which the, the yellow um, the yellow boxes highlight, that's your window ideal window of time to start that plant. And then you'll notice there's a brown um, couple boxes later on, and that's the ideal time to plant it outside. So really, this is a starting point. It's definitely not like none of this stuff is an exact science. I have to change my planting dates all the time because of weather, uh, uh, other factors like mice eating your seeds and stuff. You know, you have to you have to be flexible with gardening and farming. But this is a really good starting point if you're really new to this stuff. Um, I used it a lot when I was first starting out and it will give you a guideline that's really simple of when to start your celery um, and, and all of your plants, your tomatoes, stuff like that. And if you really want to get fancy, there's a couple uh, other features on the bottom um, that will give you some guidelines. If you have the ability to cover your plants in row cover or greenhouse material, that bumps your plant zone up 1.5 uh, zones. And if you're not familiar with USDA plant zones, you could just Google the location that you live in and it will, you can Google USDA plant zones for like Cody, Wyoming, that's where I live. And it will tell you right around zone four, zone five, depending on how you look at it. Um, and those zones just tell you your average last frost date. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I'm right on that. I might be wrong. I don't really follow that stuff super exact because it's there's difference between zone four here and zone four in Idaho or something. You know, it, it's microclimates are a very big deal. So it's just all this stuff is just a guideline. But this planting schedule will help you a lot when you're first starting out. Um, you could sit down and write down when you want to plant certain things. So if you wanted to plant everything at once, you could kind of just look and see when a good week where there's four or five crops that you want to plant and plant them all the same day. That way you don't have to, you know, necessarily plant every single week. Um, but, you know, if you have a indoor nursery with grow lights, which we go over in the gardening 101 course, or you're growing stuff by a windowsill or anything like that, um, this is going to be a great tool for you on starting your seeds and planting them outside at the right time. And that's not including the time that it takes to uh, uh, harden off your plants. That you, So you want to add about another week um, onto your actual transplant date with pretty much all of these crops because you want to have them outside gradually for a couple days before you start to actually put them in the ground. But um, I think if you look at this closely, most of the actual transplant dates in Wyoming are going to be around, oh, some of this stuff. So that's, this is all kind of cold hardy stuff. So you're going in May, um, but your whole, your um, frost hardy or your frost uh, sensitive crops are all going to be print, print, uh, planted probably around June um, sometime in there. So, you know, again, these are just rough guidelines. You're going to find out what works best for you over time, but for starting out, this is a great tool. Um, it'll save you a lot of uh, headache because if you're like me, you get really excited about planting uh, basically as soon as uh, February comes around and you want to start everything. And um, that's not necessarily the best way to do things because if you have a tomato plant that you start in February uh, and you want it to actually grow in Wyoming outside, it's going to be yellow by the time it's even close to warm enough. You know, around here, we still get frost easily till uh, the first week in June. I wouldn't plant tomatoes outside here until after like June 5th, just because every interruption that you have in the plant's growth uh, slows it down. So plants are going to produce food the fastest if they grow uninterrupted from start to finish. So a lot of times, especially in a cold climate, it's better to wait and wait till the sun is out the ground is warm and when you put that plant in the ground it's just going to take off and this tool is going to really help you with that you know um and it really does depend on the type of 
plant you're putting in the ground because cold hardy, cold tolerant plants are gonna grow a lot faster in May than a uh, tomato plant would. So this is a great tool for all of the above. Now, uh, another thing I wanted to touch on in this is it's March 4th today. So uh, I'm planting crops right now that I'm only gonna plant almost once a year. Um, and there's a little bit of wiggle room with that, but there's, there's certain crops that I only plant once a year and that's onions, celery, parsley. I don't plant once a year, but it's, it's rare. Uh, and, um, shallots, all four of those crops are, and actually I don't, I plant celery more often than that. You don't have to plant it once a year. The real point to what I'm making with these four crops is they all take a really long time to germinate. Celery, on, onions don't necessarily take a long time to germinate, but they take a long time to grow into a plant. They all are gonna be growing in a pot for about 10 weeks. That's a long time, that's two and a half months. So, uh, you know, for me, if I want to have celery on a regular basis with my farm, um, I pretty much am gonna be planting it once a week for the next month because I, to have it all year, that's what you have to do. It just takes forever to grow. Onions are really a one time a year uh, planting for me. Um, our climate is, we have 120 day growing season. So most onions take about 105 to 110 to 15 days to grow to maturity. So um, you really don't have enough time to do two crops of those. So my goal is to make the biggest onions I possibly can by the end of the growing season. But I have one shot basically to plant them. Not exactly one shot, but it's, there's, it's a critical time. This week is actually a very critical time for the farm because there's a whole lot of things that need to be planted. And if I screw up, it just means it, the timing is screwed up, but it's fairly critical to get these things right. Um, there's a short time window. So for onions, uh, I would say the week, uh, the window is a couple weeks um, in Wyoming. And, and that's not an exact uh, thing, but Last year, I planted my onions on the exact day that I planted them this year. I planted them March 1st, both years, and I didn't get them mature until about late September, and it was very cold spring last year, so I might have planted them a little too early. That might have stunted them a little bit, but and I planted them out in the field second week in May, and they didn't mature until about mid-September, uh, if I remember right, on most of them. And when you, you know, they're mature when they start to, to flop over, but that's really slow. That was probably, you know, 130 days or something. So in our climate, it's better to be early on those kinds of crops just to make sure you get them. Uh, but one tip, if you are starting any of those crops right now in the next couple of weeks, and you don't necessarily have to start the celery and the uh, parsley right away, but I would say onions and shallots, you might as well start like within the next two, three weeks. Um, one trick is if you find that depending on how you're starting your onions, if you're starting them in just like a, a red solo cup with soil, um, and you throw a couple seeds in there, uh, you, you might throw in a lot more than you think you need, because again, you might as well just have extra of all of these crops because, if you're short later, like 10, two and a half months is a long time. Something happens between now and planting time where a rabbit eats some of your crops or you forget to water them one day, you might as well have extra just to make sure you can have enough, have enough of the crop that you want. Um, so one thing I'm doing right now, I forgot that some of the seeds I planted are older. And this is another problem you might run into. I forget a lot too. So uh, it helps to plant as fresh a seed as possible with all plants, um, but especially things like celery, because you don't want to wait 20 days because sometimes celery takes 20 days to germinate. You don't want to wait 20 days to find out that seed is not viable. And I planted some seed recently that was three, four years old. And I found out that there's some problems with it. You could tell the uh, seed is old because it'll start to germinate like like really unevenly. When it's fresh, it'll all germinate at the same time uh, in general, right? Um, so what I did was I planted a whole bunch of extra seed in just a, of a tomato pot in, a, in my germination chamber, which is something that 
you don't need, but uh, it's a fancy thing to germinate seeds for a farm, but you could do the same thing in your house. Your house is basically a germination chamber and you could water those and then you'll have, you know, 50 to a hundred extra celery plants later once they're germinated. And uh, you can even use old seed for that. That's what I'm doing. I'm using up my old seed because I, I just threw a whole handful of them in there. Once they start to come up, whatever didn't germinate in your cell trays, you can pluck out. Uh, I wish I had an example with me, but um, you could pluck out one of those tiny little celery plants and stick them into the cell tray that didn't germinate. And that way you'll have a full tray. Um, and that's a really handy little trick when you have that problem. Um, cause a lot of times you might forget to order fresh seed every year of that particular crop. You know, I, I don't necessarily do that. I'm going to try and start doing that with the farm, but it's a challenge and it's, it can get very expensive. So, um, uh, and then one last thing I wanted to touch on is there's a lot of people talking about gardening and spring is when it seems like all of the energy is focused on spring with growing food and people get excited. Uh, the, the energy levels are super high, you know, right about now through uh, June and everybody's ready to go out. And once it's Mother's Day, they want to plant the whole garden. And um, what I found just by talking to people at the market is that the energy is much lower in July. People just don't want to do it anymore. And I think that's a, little, a lot, very sad because you're missing out on half the food you could produce pretty much. If you want to grow two to three times as much food in the same space, you just have to keep planting all season long. I plant in the farm up until the first week in October. There is something going in the ground every single week up until the first week in October. That's how I'm able to have food in the winter time. So, you're really missing out on a lot of potential food if you, you stop planting in May. Um, so that spring planting schedule tool is great, but it's only talking about the spring. Technically, that window of time from a lot of those crops is way longer. It's not necessarily going to work for stuff like celery and onions. You can't keep planting those all year, but you can keep planting radishes, carrots, um, uh, whole bunch of other stuff there's a lot of crops that you can get two crops a year in even in wyoming and that's a big deal because when you have 120 days to grow like we do um and you do want to fill your root cellar or your fridge or whatever with food um that's a very handy resource so uh for me as a farmer this stuff become this is very natural concept i'm trying to run my farm as a business so i have to try and get two to three crops a year but the it's totally possible with your garden as well, especially if you have a nursery of any kind in your house. If you have a couple of shelves with grow lights um, or even your windowsill, you could get away with the windowsill is a little tricky because the, the light levels are low. You could even start plants in the shade outside. I've done that many times uh, in the summertime. You could start kale plants under a tree because in the summertime, it's plenty warm enough. Um, and you can keep having plants ready to go. So when you have a spot open up in your garden, you can just plug a plant in and you're ready to go. Um, that is a trick uh, that I don't hear enough people talking about. I, I wish maybe maybe there are more, but um, just don't think of the spring as the only time you can plant something to produce a crop. You know, you're if you think about it like a farm, it, it's a it's an organism, and so your garden is not just like a canvas that you paint once. It's a canvas that's changing all the time. So you, you harvest a head of broccoli, you could pull that whole plant out and then put in a plant of lettuce or something like that. Um, and as you get better with your days to maturity, your familiar familiarity with the days to maturity of certain crops, you'll get really good at just knowing if I put this lettuce plant in the ground in July, it's going to produce by September and I will have another crop of lettuce, you know. Um, carrots are a really big one that I think about all the time, you know. Carrots are a crop that have a pretty short time window to plant outside. Um, it's basically like I just keep planting them almost every other week from about May 21st till about 
4th of July, mid July, depends on the variety too. But uh, if you keep planting that way, that 4th of July planting will be ready in around um, September or something. And around here, that's about the time you want your cr outside crops to be done because they're not going to grow much after that. Um, but that gets you so much more food. I mean, if you think about that, you could had just as an example, say you had a bed of six lettuce heads or something. I don't know. Uh, and you are just picking the outer leaves. You planted them in middle of May. You're picking the leaves probably, I don't know, June 1st through, uh, you pick them, pick the leaves for like a month. And then uh, if you knew your plant timings, you could plant a really slow carrot, 4th of July. You could even plant that carrot while the lettuce plants are still on the ground. I've seen people do that. Charles Dowding does that on his YouTube channel. Um, and you could have those carrots sitting there germinating while the lettuce is still on the ground. And then once they're germinated and you're done with the lettuce, just twist it out. Boom, you have a bed of carrots ready to go. That's a whole second crop. You know, and depending on how big of a space that is, that could be 5, 10, 20 pounds of carrots if you, you know, get the plant spacing right with carrots. So um, it's a really big opportunity that if, if you think about planting like a farm, uh, you you have that constant rotation. You all, With a farm, you always want constant rotation of food. And the same applies to your garden. You want a constant production of food. Um, you, you don't want all that food to just come at once. You want it constantly in manageable amounts, you know. Um, so the, and there's a whole rabbit hole to that. That's that's a lot to explain on here. But uh, the planting all the time thing is a really big deal. I, I really hope um, people start to think about that because I just it makes me sad when I hear people that are they sound so depressed in July when they have a big garden full of weeds and their energy just they, I could tell they're just not going to do anything with it the rest of the season. And that's that's sad. So. Um, yeah, definitely consider planting all the time. That spring planting schedule is great to start, but don't forget a lot of those crops can keep, you can plant them, I would say outside, even in, in Wyoming, you can keep planting at least until mid-July on almost everything in there. And if you live in a warmer climate, uh, it's going to be a lot different. I don't even know. You probably got a lot more opportunity than uh, I'm used to. I'm just really used to our climate and it's very short. So I'm real intense about that time window and making sure that it's always happening you know i'm always getting plants in the ground when they need to be in the ground so um, and with your method zach i mean people shouldn't be completely exhausted and tired out by july because of your weeding method and how you keep yeah. up a garden is i've learned so much over the last couple of years um just watching you and learning from you but yeah yeah, if you start the garden like we talk about, in a, you shouldn't be exhausted by July. You know, you should have plenty of energy to keep planting all the way through. So, yeah. And Zach, I apologize. Um, for some reason, people are not able to get on to the webinar, but thankfully, we've recorded everything tonight. So, we will make sure that everyone has access to this after. This is so helpful. Um, and I don't think people realize how much you can do and how much food you can produce for your family with your methods. And so, yeah. Well, that's fine. You know, the, the information is still out there, you know. So yeah. it's, it's just as good two years from now as it is today. Yeah. So, but, so uh, Zach, is there, anything, is there anything else you were going to cover tonight when it comes to, you know, mastering the seed starting process to get ready for your garden? You know, I would just say, just try it. Just start doing something. Um, just throw some seeds in a pot. You could start with red Solo cups. You could buy those at Walmart and you'd have, you know, I don't know how many come in a packet, but it's probably three bucks for a packet of like 50. Get some of those, get high quality potting soil. One of the big things I talk about is don't cheap out on that because if you do, a lot of times your plants will run out of food and um, turn yellow and then they, they become useless. So if you want your plants to actually be good for two and a half months, you want to buy high quality potting soil. I talk about that a lot. Um, I've been talking about it on my Instagram a lot lately. Um, there's a 
potting soil called Terracraft, uh, Mother Earth Terracraft. You could buy it at any Ace Hardware. That's a great one. But, you know, there's tons of other ones, but you want to make sure there's something with really good organic nitrogen material. And uh, those two things will help you a lot. Um, and you could do a whole lot with just those two things on your windowsill. I've done the windowsill thing. It works. There's problems with it, with the light. You know, you're going to have leggy plants, but certain plants don't really mind being leggy. Just start them later. But uh, just do it. You know, that's the all the best way to learn any of this stuff is by doing it. I take in, I've learned everything I know, not everything, but most of what I know about growing from a course, just like our gardening course, but uh, doing it myself is the only way I could actually talk about it to somebody else. I couldn't just explain it. Like you, you have to do it to really um, build the skill to be able to teach it to somebody else or actually produce the results that you want. Because a lot of this stuff, um, it depends on your context. It depends on your time. Uh, you know, who you are as a person, you know, you're going to be different than whoever's teaching it. Um, so you have to figure out what works in your schedule, but just doing it is going to really get you more than half of the way there. And you're going to learn so much on the process of, um, doing it and just keep doing it, you know, uh, on a fairly regular basis, try and make it a party routine. And, uh, I think you'll be shocked at the results. Uh, especially if you just do those two things, look up your last frost date and figure out when you could plant all those things. Um, that's huge. I mean, most people don't even know that. So, um, yeah, yeah I well, mean, that's about all I think I could fit into to this or so this is a, yeah, no, this universe is great. Of stuff. I know. I was just going to say, I've never done my own celery or onions, I think because I didn't realize how early I had to start them. And so I've been using your tool and plugging everything in there. And now I'm, you know, I printed everything out. So I have it in front of me. So I will be, I'm going to try onions and celery this year. Um, Cause usually I've traded you for butter in the past so I could have celery and it grows great in our climate. I mean, we're oh, up yeah. South Fork where it's awful, you know, it's not awful soil, but we are cold and it has done well the last two years. Um, it's a great crop to grow in Wyoming, at least. Yeah. You can um, get a lot of food from it too. Cause you can out. Man. Our, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, one, one other thing I wanted to say when you, when you think about the money you're spending with all of this stuff, Seeds and potting soil are way cheaper than buying plants at a nursery. If you do the math on that, and I don't think many people do because I, you know, I've been guilty of it myself. Sometimes I bought plants at a nursery, but if you want to spend three dollars on the tomato plant, you could grow it with high the highest quality potting soil. The, the stuff that I buy, I already know the math. It is uh well, my tomato seeds are very expensive, but that's you don't need to use expensive seeds. You can probably use about a five cent tomato seed and then maybe 30 cents in highest quality potting soil to create the same plant. That's, uh, what is that? That's one tenth the price. And so just do the math on that and figure out how much food you could grow that way. Buying seeds is way cheaper than buying plants at a nursery. So just something to think about when you, when you're like, might kind of think that $30 bag of potting soil is expensive. It is pocket change. It is so cheap when you actually do the math on uh, what you're and, producing with that. Yeah. And Zach, do you have any good resources for where you buy your seeds? Yes. Um, I buy almost all my seeds from Johnny's. Um, that's a very good place to buy bulk seed and they have a lot of hybrid seeds hybrids are uh something i stick to a lot because of disease resistance and performance but you don't necessarily have to do that for a for garden my best recommendation for garden seeds is true leaf market because their seeds are really cheap high quality and they're open mostly open pollinated so if you did want to save seeds you can save them almost exclusively i think almost all of them you could save there i'm sure they have some hybrids but um, if you're interested in seed saving, True Leaf is the best. You could buy a pound of carrot seeds for like 20 bucks and that's yeah. going to last you for like a decade. Yeah. Um, and so. we'll be talking about seed saving later on too with homestead mentors because a lot of homesteaders are wanting that sustainable way of life. 
and we don't want to have to buy our seed year after year after year. So that is a really popular topic out there. And we um, are trying a couple of our own seeds that we saved from last year, but that's a practice that we really want people to understand how to do as well. But um, you guys, it is seven or eight o'clock. We're right on, on the money here. And so I'm going to keep the time um, on point here. But if you have not checked out um, Zach's Gardening 101 course, you guys, it's over 70 videos of in-depth videos with Zach. If you thought this 30 minutes was helpful at all, um, the course is going to blow your mind. So anyone um, <clears throat> who was going to be on tonight, we were going to offer the course for free. And so we're going to figure this out. We're going to get this recording out to everybody, Zach, and then we'll probably draw a name for anyone who comments what the favorite part of their part of this webinar was. Um, but we really want to get that course out to people, especially in our area, because um, Zach lives and does his business here right in Wyoming. And so he farms in the, the hardest places of the world. Um, and so... Zach, I want to thank you for your time. I know it's precious. Um, and we're so thankful to you for just allowing us to pick your brain and, and just get all the knowledge we can from you because people really do um, need your knowledge because you've got a great thing going with Farm Table West and we can all learn. So, Well, thank you for having me. I hope, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have questions next time because I'm sure there's, okay. there's a lot. That'll I know. I'm so sorry. I... I'm going to make this process a lot easier next time, but your next webinar is on the first Monday of next month, which will be April 1st. So hopefully it's not another ah, fooled you, but um, we'll make that available to everyone and we'll make sure that um, everyone is able to get on here. So thank you again, Zach. And I'm going to go ahead and end the recording now so I can get that downloaded and we'll get that out to everybody as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Zach.